All right, this one should be relatively quick today because yesterday it went a little long. It was at the 15 minute mark. It's like, should we finish? Hey, just a little, um, anytime you're studying for something, your brain works best when you study like in 15 to 20 minute increments. If you go too long, your brain starts forgetting that stuff. So if you have a big test to study for, it's good to study like 15 to 20 minutes, take a break, walk around the house, get a drink or whatever, and then get back to it. So that's why in this class, we try to like, you know, every 20 minutes we do something different. Usually a little lesson at the beginning, a little work in class, a little Frank and beans, you know, Ideally, that's what we would do. So today's going to be probably shorter than that, maybe less than 10 minutes, because we just need to finish this first article that we're reading about Cambodia. So we learned yesterday about how Pol Pot came to power. We um, hopefully talked about what his goal was. Yeah, sometimes I think of him like a Thanos, if anybody remembers those movies, like he was an evil guy. He wanted to kill half the population, but he had a good reason of doing it, right? That's Thanos. Like he thought people would thrive if there were fewer people, like the human race. He had to get rid of a few. We had to get rid of half, but the half that survived would be better off. Yeah, I don't think Pol Pot, I think he just, the more I learn about this guy, he had no plan. Like he, he we talked about what he wanted he wanted an agrarian, so, or, or do we say agricultural? So both of them are pretty much the same, but he wanted a, a farming society, no class, not upper class, lower class, wanted everybody to be the same class, and he wanted that kind of communal living. And to go about it, like, he killed a lot of people, but it didn't, like, in the video we'll watch after this, it seemed like he almost got just crazy with power, like a lot of dictators do. Communism, I've said this a couple times, but communism on, on paper, like when you read the theory, it's, it's pretty good. Like everybody's treated equally. I mean, who could argue with that, right? Everybody has the same amount of everything. But what happens when you put it into practice, human greed takes over. So whoever is in power often gets, or I think every time it's happened, human greed, like they corrupts, right? So those people will start taking advantage of the system. Yeah. I don't think any country. Yeah. I don't think any country has ever successfully put into practice communism. Like it just hasn't happened. It's always been a few people at the top get, and that's not communism. Like everybody, even the people in power are treated equally. So obviously in Cambodia, this does not work at all. Unfortunately, costing the lives of maybe one and a half to 3 million people. All right, so let's get into the article. I will share it nice and big here. We ended on this picture of these people, a lot of people in the photo. And yesterday, I suspected that a lot of them did not make it, unfortunately. All right, so let's start reading right here. I wish this thing, activities, would go away, but it looks like it's here to stay. And this thing, like we get a really small area in which to read, but hopefully it's big enough. Everybody can see it. Let's do it. In addition, anyone who was believed to be an intellectual was killed. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, people who spoke more than one language, and even people who wore glasses became targets. Citizens could be arrested for the slightest offenses. And the government set up vast prisons where people were held, tortured, and executed. The most dreaded of these prisons was known as S-21, and it was located in the capital city of Phnom Penh. Accused traitors and their families were brought here, photographed, tortured, and killed. Of the roughly 17,000 men, women, and children who were brought to S-21, there were only about a dozen survivors. There were mass graves throughout the country, areas that became known as the killing fields. So that's kind of famous when you think of Cambodia, the genocide. The killing fields is a kind of a term that's synonymous with the genocide. If you ever hear the killing fields, like outside of this classroom, you're probably going to be talking about uh, Cambodian genocide. In the video we watched today, 
the numbers are going to be a little bit different. Still a huge proportion of people that were killed, but I think they're going to say 18,000 and they're going to say like 23 people survived. So like, I mean, the numbers aren't that important. It's just the the vast difference in people who were there, brought there and killed people who survived. So splitting hairs, I think. All right, let me uh, make this a lot bigger. Luckily, the end of the Khmer Rouge. On December 25th, 1978, Vietnam invaded Cambodia. And remember, Pol Pot was always a little bit worried about outside influences. He lumped in China, Vietnam, capitalist West, so the United States. And he had good reason to worry about Vietnam invading. So they just conquered, like they just drove out the U.S. But luckily, Vietnam invading Cambodia is going to put an end to the killing fields. It's going to disrupt Pol Pot's plan. I cannot imagine. Hopefully when you're uh, reading these or watching these videos, you put yourself in that position. Like, what would I do if it was me and my family? I, I just can't imagine. It's just um, I hope we never have to experience anything like that. But it's just I don't know what you do. It's just like, um, you know, tsunami. When you, If you've ever seen those, I'm like, oh, I could survive a tsunami. It's just water coming in. But just the amount, the power, just, you know, I think we're all kind of doomed in those situations. So that's why I hope never to be in that situation. But you never know. Most likely we won't. We've had some good stability here in this country for a long while. The, right here, Khmer Rouge government was overthrown by the Vietnamese army. Vietnamese troops stayed in the country until 1989 with armed clashes between Vietnamese troops and Cambodian citizens continuing throughout the 1980s. Yet, the Khmer Rouge did not disappear until much later. It continued to hold Cambodia's seat at the United Nations until 1933. Now, I mentioned this before. I think they'll say it. They'll either say it here or they'll say it um, in the video. I know they say it in the video. But uh, Pol Pot lives to like 73, dies of natural causes, largely responsible for the deaths of over a million people, and he gets to live until old age. Doesn't seem quite fair. On October 23rd, 1991, the Comprehensive Cambodian Peace Agreement, commonly referred to as the Paris Peace Accords, Paris Peace Accords, was signed with the help of the United Nations. It ended the 12-year civil war in Cambodia. In May 1993, the first free elections in more than 20 years were held. In January 20, 20 uh, sorry, in January 2001, the Cambodian government set up the Khmer Rouge Tribunal to try the leadership of the Khmer Rouge for crimes against humanity. Trials began in 2009. So far, however, only three people have been found guilty. The vast majority of those responsible for the killings and other crimes have suffered no consequences for their actions. Yeah. Unfortunate. So every so often, you know, um, you know don't want to, don't want to flex too much, but you know, over a uh, half a million people, you know, follow me on social media, but just this morning I was just going through comments and stuff and somebody said, Hey, I'm from Cambodia. So I just, I answered back like, Hey, you know, my students are learning about your country I said, of course, you know, we have to focus on the bad parts, but, you know, I do try to leave the impression that like, it's a beautiful country. Like, I think if you were to visit now, you know, it's, it's safe and geography. Now they mentioned, you know, maybe don't go into the uh, more rural areas, but if you're going to the touristy parts, certainly Phnom Penh would be great. So I hope to visit one day. Um, just remember it's a beautiful country with uh, just a horrible history. All right. We'll get into um, the video. And then there'll be time to work in class and maybe a little Frank and Bean.